Hello, and welcome to the 505 tutorial for configuring and calibrating actuator drivers. In this tutorial, we will review the configuration and calibration of actuator drivers. The 505 provides an isolated group of two actuator drivers that can be configured to 4 to 20 or 0 to 200 milliamp output ranges. Properly configuring and calibrating the drivers will ensure your valves and turbine run correctly. To configure actuator drivers, you must be logged in to the configure user level and configuration mode. Refer to the changing user levels and changing modes and languages tutorials to learn how to do this. To check the user level and mode, press mode. To access the actuator driver summary screen from the home screen, use the navigation cross keys to select drivers, then press enter. On the actuator driver summary screen that opens, both channels are displayed along with their fault status, function, milliamp value, demand, and units. Remember, each of these channels corresponds to the similarly numbered input terminals on the back of the 505. To select an actuator channel to configure, use the navigation cross keys to highlight the desired channel. For this demonstration, we'll choose actuator 1. Then press enter. The selected channel screen opens. To configure the selected channel, use the navigation cross keys to highlight the actuator function box. Press enter to open the actuator function drop down menu. Use the adjust keys as many times as necessary to highlight the desired option on the drop down menu. Press enter to select it. Use the navigation cross keys to highlight the actuator range box. Press Enter to open the Actuator Range drop-down menu. Use the Adjust keys as many times as necessary to highlight the desired option on the drop-down menu. Press Enter to select it. To set the 0 to 100% demand for the next two boxes, set the current at either end of the demand spectrum. For example, for an actuator that requires 20 to 160 milliamp, enter 20 in the milliamp at 0% demand box and 160 in the milliamp at 100% demand box. For this demonstration, we will not configure the dither. However, if we were to do so, we would follow these steps. Use the navigation cross keys to highlight the dither box. Press enter to select the current value. Use the numeric keypad to enter the desired value. Then press enter again to confirm your entry. To finish configuring actuator one, the use actuator fault shutdown box contains a check mark by default, which tells the 505 to issue a trip whenever an actuator fault is detected. If the actuator faults, the 505 will issue a shutdown. If you remove the check mark from this box by selecting the box and pressing enter, an actuator fault alarm will be issued without a shutdown. The unit identifies an actuator fault if the current drops below or goes above the failure levels, essentially checking for an open or short circuit in the actuator wiring or coil. If you want to invert the output of the channel, select the Invert Actuator Output box and press Enter to add a check mark to it. If you want to enter a new tag name for this channel, Select the device tag box. Press enter. Use the numeric keypad to change the current tag name and press enter again to confirm your entry. If the second actuator driver has been enabled, you can access it from the actuator one screen by pressing the black function key below the right arrow button. As you can see here, actuator two contains the same configuration options as the first actuator. To return to the actuator driver summary screen, press Escape. Press Home to return to the main screen. To calibrate the actuator drivers, you must be in Calibration Mode. So now you need to exit Configuration Mode. Log into either the Service or Configure User level, and then put the 505 into Calibration Mode. Refer to the Changing User Levels and Changing Modes and Languages tutorials to learn how to do all this. After you are done, return to the main screen. From there, 
return to the Actuator 1 screen by selecting Drivers and then selecting Actuator 1. Notice the new Calibration button on the screen's menu bar. This is here now because you are logged into Calibration mode. Press the black function key below Calibration. Forcing allows the controller to issue an output value, which makes it a good tool to use when calibrating and troubleshooting. To enable forcing, press the black function key below Forcing. In the pop-up window that opens, verify that the LEDs for both permissives are illuminated green. Then, use the navigation cross keys to highlight OK and press Enter. You can now adjust the demand value of the channel. To do so, use the navigation cross keys to highlight the manual adjust box. And then, use the adjust keys to change the value of the demand manually. Note that the output gauge reflects the changes you make. You can also change the demand value by using go to values. To do so, press the black function key below commands. A new set of buttons, go, go to minimum, go to maximum, displays on the menu bar. Use the navigation cross keys to highlight the go to demand box. To change the current value in the go to demand box, either Use the adjust keys or press enter. Use the numeric keypad to enter a new value and then press enter again to confirm the value. Now press the black function key below go. Notice that the value in the output gauge updates automatically to match the go to demand value. The other two go to buttons can be used to drive the demand to the minimum and maximum values of 0 and 100% respectively. You can also change the values in the gain and offset boxes to calibrate the signal. For a properly wired and functioning circuit, the output gauge and output box should match. Output is the value the software is requesting. The milliamp source gauge and the readback box should also match. Milliamp source is the value measured at the positive terminal for the channel, and readback is the value measured at the negative terminal returning to the channel. When you are done forcing outputs, press the black function key below exit. If you made changes, press the black function key below save settings. Then disable the forcing by pressing the black function key below forcing. Press Escape or the black function key below Summary to return to the Actuator Driver Summary screen to calibrate the second actuator if it is being used. If you are finished, press Home to return to the main screen. Remember to exit Calibration Mode when you are done making changes. You now know the basics of configuring and calibrating actuator drivers. Please be sure to view the other tutorials for more information.